Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Mr. Marty. Well, I'm not in Starbucks, and I don't know if I'm going to make any more videos. The music is so loud in there. You, I went back and looked at some of my videos. I'm like, man, the music's too loud. But anyways, uh, here at the office, uh, getting ready to uh, start my day. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning, and I wanted to talk about Craigslist scams. And not so much specific scams that are out there or specific individuals uh, who are out there um, trying to scam. And, and some of these individuals are, are, are known... Uh, you know, um, by other people, and um, y you know, this isn't the isn't the first time that there's been, you know, some type of issue with, uh, you know, uh, in integrity or, or 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 you know says you know s something not being right with with a business deal. So, here's the thing. I'm so I'm moving to Salt Lake, and I'm and I'm looking at renting a room, either in you know somebody's house or in a, a in a in a dormitory. You know, in fact, I think I might just end up, uh, you know, r renting a, a dorm close to the, the University of Utah. I, I don't care. I've lived in uh, Spartan, you know, uh, uh, conditions before. So it's no, no, no big issue for me. So, so I'm, I'm on Craigslist and I'm, and I'm looking at all this stuff. And, and I, I used to think that I was kind of impervious to this stuff. You know, I used to think, well, I'm, I'm a pretty smart guy. You know, I would never send money, um, to someone, you know, buying something or renting, you know, somewhere sight unseen. But in fact, I, I, that almost happened to me. I mean, I was, I was pretty close to, uh, pretty close to, to getting up, you know, getting the money. They, they were asking, a, a, a quite a large, the, the one person was asking quite a large amount for, um, for deposits. And, and I, and I was almost like kind of going down that road of, of, you know, getting ready to, you know, uh, wire, money or, or whatever, or send them to the end. But, but the thing is like, and that's really what I talk about are the red flags, you know, red flags kept coming up in these conversations. I, I had, uh, with this one, uh, this one individual and, and, and I just kind of ignored those red flags, even though I, I tend to think of myself as pretty smart. I just, I, I just ignored them because I wanted this place so bad. And because I'm, un, I'm up against a deadline, um, you know, I've only got two weeks to, to find some place. In two weeks I'm 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 out of here. I'm 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 flying to Salt Lake. So so uh so all that was kinda going through my mind and and so really what I what I want to focus on are red flags and 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 picking up on, on cues that that the other person is kind of uh um uh you know w without them knowing it are kind of giving off you know kind of a a a a a whiff of you know something's not right right here or whatever so i just i just want to kind of go through these sort of seems like common sense but again i don't know i mean somehow common sense just kind of goes out the window when you you really want some some place really really bad so so the first one is you can call it the hard sell, you can call it high pressure, whatever. Uh, the person selling an object or they're, they're, they're you know, renting a, a place or, or selling a place, whatever. And, and they're doing this hard sell. They're, they're saying, hey, you're never going to get another deal like this. This is a once in a lifetime. Uh, hey, I'm cutting you a deal on this. These other uh, places go for much more. Uh, you know, and, and this comes up repeatedly in the conversation where they are are telling you verbally that you're never going to find in any other place like this or any other object at this price and, and whatever. It's, it's, it is the golden opportunity that, that you have to, you have to get in on. Well, that, that's the first, that's the first red flag, because here's the thing. Again, if you kind of step back at this and look at it, if you have something that's of worth, I mean, for years now, I, I've been selling uh, firearms, you know, and I, and I would go to gun shows and I would and I would buy uh, collector item firearms and I would and I would uh, uh, go to other gun shows and sell them or or, or sell them on um, on uh, the, the various uh, bulletin boards that, that that specialize in this in uh, in the valley where I live. And and when I had like you know a, a couple months ago, I had been sitting on this one firearm that was 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 just very rare and I, and I knew it when I, I bought it like about a year and a half or two years ago and so I just sat in just sat in my closet 
and I need to raise money for this trip. So I went down to uh, one of our local gun shows, and and I mean, the guy saw the sign. I had this sign which said what it was. The guy said, "Can I see it?" Bang! It comes out. The the guy almost like had a coronary. I mean, he knew what I had, and I knew what I had. I didn't have to say anything to this guy, and he never tried to lower my whatever my price. Bang! You know, the money came out, and, and I, in fact, I, I sold that within five minutes of walking into that gun show. So, so something that is really a good deal, you know, that's, that's, the person doesn't have to tell you that. So the first, first red flag, the hard sell, the high pressure. The second is the, the person starts to tell you verbally, and you, and you can get into semantics here, you know, are they boasting, are they just verbally informing you, or whatever. But the person starts to you know, um, recite all of their altruistic acts. You know, I donate to the Red Cross. I, I tutor disabled kids in my spare time. I donate huge amounts of money and time to these organizations. And I'm, in, you know, I'm doing this and that. And, you know, you think you're talking to, you know, Mother Teresa. You think you're talking to, to someone who, you know, just, you know, does all these altruistic acts. Well, People who do that, and I know a lot of people who do that. It's a business owner that uh, sits on the, the United Way board, a very good friend of mine, Steve. And I didn't even know Steve donated his time to the United Way sitting on their board of directors and involved in all these other stuff until one day I saw him up there. And I'm like, dude, you know, what's up with uh, you, you being parked way up here? And he's like, oh, I, I, you know, and he starts telling me. But he didn't, like, volunteer that. I, I was specifically asking him why he was at the at the United Way. And so it, it, people who do altruistic acts, people who do acts of charity, they, they don't usually discuss them, and especially in a conversation with a, a total stranger on the phone that has responded to a Craigslist ad. That, that just never happens. So that's red flag number two. They're, they're just talking about all their charity work, their altruistic acts, how involved they are in the community. And it's all part of the construction of this trap. It's all part of the lure, you know, to draw you in and, and to drop your to drop your suspicions, to drop your caution, to you know, to get your confidence. Hence the term con person, con man, whatever. It's confidence. And so they, they're they're reciting all these um altruistic acts that they do. Red flag number two. Red flag number three wealth, money, property. If the person that you're talking to starts dropping in conversations, oh, uh, my wife and I vacation in the Hamptons every year. Uh, I know, really? I, I've never even been to the Hamptons, but I know that you've got to be pretty wealthy to vacation in the Hamptons. I, 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 I know this. And so when you're, you're telling me that you and your wife go to the Hamptons, you know, all the time and, and yeah, I was in this business deal and I own property here and there and I, I fly all over the world and I do this and that, you know, people, people with, with wealth, people with property, people with money, they, they, they do not tell you, they don't, you know, I know several property owners in downtown that are extremely wealthy. I happen to know that simply because I, 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 you know, know who they are. They don't volunteer that information. In fact, some of the property owners downtown, I don't even realize they even own certain properties until it kind of, I'm like, hey, does, does uh, you know, Joe own that one? And then someone will say, no, that's, um, you know, that's Dolores, you know, she, whatever. You, you know, and, and I go to Dolores and I say, hey, Dolores, I, I didn't know, uh, you know, you, you owned uh, this building. Oh, yeah, that, uh, yeah, I happen to own that one too. But they don't like volunteer that information. So when someone on Craigslist is, is telling you that, that they own multiple properties, they fly around the world, and they vacation in the Hamptons and, and, and all these other things, that's a, it's a huge red flag. It's, it's a, it's, it, it, is, it is a huge, huge red flag. And then, of course, the very, the very end one, which is total common sense, but it, it kind of just goes out the window, is the sending the money you know, wiring the money, whatever, depositing it in an account or a PayPal or whatever, you know, without actually being there, you know, inspecting the property, inspecting the item that you're buying. And again, this applies to anything, you know, cars, jewelry, firearms, you know, what we you know, whatever you're, whatever you're having to buy, 
you know, uh, or, or renting a room like me, whatever you're having to buy or rent over the, the internet, you know, that's, that's, and, and I can't believe that I was like, I was like this close. Well, I'll close by saying this, um, this is one of the persons when I when I, I I wrote them an email and I said look I, I'm just getting a lot of red flags here so here's the deal I'm not like saying no but here's the deal I'm gonna I'm gonna be flying in on the 31st and then I'm gonna look at the property meet you face to face and then you know we'll we'll kind of conduct our business and and I get this angry email with like four paragraphs of how the red flags were on me and that I was trying to deceive them. They even brought up in the email, they said, well, you said on the phone that you were ready to write the check and send it right now. So I guess you're a liar. Well, no, I wasn't a liar. I, you know, I just fell into that, you know, losing my, losing my, my, my higher uh, judgment and uh, my, my reasoning ability. And yeah, I was, I was pretty close to getting up the money and and sending it simply because I was so comfortable with this person but that was because I was ignoring the red flags and I didn't I didn't I didn't pursue that so so uh that th those those are the huge red flags don't send money you know unless you you see the property you know when they start doing the hard sell the pressure you know this is the best deal you're never going to get another property like this um, they start reciting their altruistic acts, their acts of charity, what a wonderful person they are and blah, blah, blah. And then when they, when they, you know, again, through the conversation are mentioning property, wealth, you know, um, places they've lived or, you know, vacation or, or whatever and, 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 and all this other stuff, you know, I mean, if you tell me you spend six months of the year in the Bahamas, uh, that that I know I know you you've got money I, I know you know you, or you're telling me that in order to make me believe that you have money and that so I will send my money to you well I don't know because I don't know anybody who spends six months in the Bahamas so anyways um, but so so and then and then um, and then the other thing is they get they get upset when you don't when you don't kind of like you know walk walk into the walk into the trap that has been so so carefully constructed so. Uh, hey, the bottom line is, um, you know, um, it, it, it is what it is. And so um, my my game plan at this point, after after learning several of these lessons on Craigslist, almost almost parting with my money, but not 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 quite. I, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I didn't. After learning, I, I just basically said to myself, hey, you know what, Marty? If you miss out on it, 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 it so what? It's better to miss out on something than take a risk. And, and, you know, be, be, you know, uh, end up parting with your money or, or, you, you know, or just as bad, maybe it's not a scam, but, but maybe that person, you know, I, I need to like see them. I need to, you know, s you know, and, and get a person to person. So at this point, at this point, here's the game plan. Uh, I'm flying in on the 31st. I'm going to have a whole list of uh of of rooms that people are offering and then you know once i get to the airport bang i'm just going to go around i'm going to hit all of these you know meet these people face to face look around you know and and get a feel for what's going on and then and then if i feel excuse me if i feel comfortable and then we conduct the transaction and, and it's better for both parties and that way they get to they get to meet me. I mean, as you can see, I'm not. I don't have any, you know, uh, gang or or prison tattoos or or whatever. So, so in, in addition to the various background checks that, that people do, I mean, they need to meet you, and I need to see them. You know, my you know my prospective landlord. I want to know. You know, does this you know the guy I'm renting from? I mean, he might sound great over the phone, but does he have prison tats going up his neck? You know, does he have a tat a tat that says you know one eight seven on five zero? I actually I actually saw a guy on uh, the train the other day he had a tattoo uh, uh 187 on 50 which which he's advocating uh, uh murdering a, p a police officer i mean obviously the guy had been in in the prison but but these guys i mean you don't know when you're dealing with them over the phone so this is just mr marty saying beware of craigslist uh, internet scams go with your gut go with your gut of what your gut is telling you and look at those red flags and don't send money Unless you're eyeballing this in person and you get to see that that person face to face, because who knows? Like I said, they could be have all these you know prison hats and stuff, and you don't you know you don't know. Anyways, another episode of Mr. Marty saying beware of the Craigslist internet scam. Have an awesome day, folks. Bye.